Hello, I wanted to make a video sort of explaining uh, how to use Yarkim FD, uh, show you some of the features and show you the installation process. Uh, so just to begin with, Yarkim FD is a multifunctional display for Kerbal Space Program. Uh, so basically it's just a, it displays flight data with uh, graphical widgets basically. Um, and the big thing with uh, Yarkim FD is that it's completely sort of external to Kerbal Space Program, so um, you know you can run it in a separate window. You can run it on a separate monitor. You can even run it on a separate computer. Uh, so I think it's like great for sort of enhancing your K-speed gameplay with um, graphical widgets. And the reason I actually made it was because I wanted to have a multifunctional display in the uh, cockpit I was building for Kerbal Space Program. So uh, this is an older picture, but as you can see, there's sort of a um, cutout here. And this would be where I would have a display that's gonna display uh, flight data. Even if you're not building a cockpit for Kerbal Space Program, I think uh, Yarkim FD can give you that sort of in-vehicle action that the field that the stock game doesn't really have. Uh, so to use Yarkim FD, uh, first of all, you, well, links will be in the description. Um, you need the Yarkim FD executable, which I have on the GitHub. And you also need just Yark, which uh, this is the plugin that Yarkim FD uses to actually communicate with Kerbal Space Program. So just uh, download both of these zip files. And unfortunately, I named them the same thing but it should be obvious from the size difference which one is which. But um, so first um, extract the just yark zip file and then inside of it you'll see the DLL file for the plugin. So just uh, move the folder that has the DLL file into your KSP game data folder as with any other mod. And then after you do that you can launch Yark MFD. So you'll see it has a sort of um, tiling user interface where the screen is sort of split into tiles and then each tile you can split further into more tiles and then you can adjust the size of each tile. Um, so the first thing is you need to actually connect to Kerbal Space Program, which I have my game here. And you see, you all you have to do is just enter the IP address here. Um, since I have Yarkim FD and KSP running on the same computer, I would just enter the local host IP 127.0.0.1, uh, and then hit connect, and it should say that it connected. Um, and then if you're running KSP on a different computer to Yarkim FD, we need to put in the IP address of that computer. And then if you're running it on a different network for whatever reason, you'd have to port forward it. Uh, basically, it's the same as with, say, a Minecraft server, but it's just a different port that you have to use. Anyway, so basically, once you have connected, you can use Yard MFD. So the first set of widgets I want to show are the ones for sort of flying rockets. Um, so uh, if you go back to the window, you can just close the options. Um, but the main ones for flying rockets are going to be the nav ball, the orbit display, and probably the docking alignment if you're doing docking. So you can see there's just a list of widgets that you can open. Um, so first one would be probably the orbit display, right? So once you open that, you can go up here, click on the split button, and then it will split the windows. And then here you can open your second widget, and then you can split this window again, and there you can, you know, open another widget. It's basically a docking, or it's a tiling user interface. Um, so I'm sure you know how to use a nav ball, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to show the docking alignment for now. So um, basically for the docking alignment, what you have to do, um, you have to put the orange dot you have to rotate to put the orange in the center, 
and then you have to translate to put the pink in the center, right? So it's uh, similar to Navy Fish's docking alignment display, I guess. I used uh, the same alignment icon, but I didn't want to copy his entire code, so I did rewrite it, and I think the controls are a little different. But basically, well, first you get a target. There's no way to actually set a target from within the ArcMFD. But just to demonstrate how you would dock, for example, with the docking alignment, so once again, you align the orange in the center. I mean, first of all, you have to be within a reasonable range to the ship you're trying to dock with. But then after that, uh, I think we're too far, so I'm just going to set it. Okay, we're getting a little closer. I think this is a better range to start docking. So you get the rotate to get the hold up get the orange in the center of the crosshairs and then after that you use IJKL as normal to try to get the pink in the center and basically when the orange is in the center that means you're aligned your angle is aligned to the docking port and when the pink is in the center that's your you're actually sort of on the same axis as the docking port. And when you're using IJKL, you just, um, you can just look at the docking alignment display. One feature that you can actually use is uh, the kill lateral velocity feature if you press the X button and that will basically prevent you from moving relative to the docking port axes. So you can see that uh, I'm just going to go left and then it's going to automatically kill my lateral velocity. And this is helpful for actually getting lined up. And you can see we're pretty close to lined up. So I'm just going to go forward. You can see the Z velocity, that means we're approaching the docking port at 2 meters per second. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. Uh, we're not totally aligned. So I'll just get that aligned as perfectly as possible. And then just go forward. And you'll see docks. Now, um, I haven't really done this in a while, so uh, it did take me a little longer than usual, but it's pretty easy to do. Now, the second big part for rockets, other than the docking and the nav ball, is the orbit display. And this is basically similar to the actual Kerbal Space Program orbit display. So I'm actually going to have these side by side. And as you can see, um, basically it will show you anything that you can see in the actual Kerbal Space Program orbit display. So for example, if I create a maneuver in Kerbal Space Program, you can see the maneuver in Yark MFD. And um, let's say I create a flight path to the moon. Right, so we have the intercept, and in Yark MFD, you can see that it will actually show you the orbit. Um, and then you can use the arrow keys to sort of see the orbits. So you can see the in blue, we have the current orbit, which is just around Corbett, uh, Kerbin. And then you can, if you use the arrow down, you can see the orbit of the moon, which is here. And then you can see the planned orbits, which um, what this M means is that it means that you will have a maneuver which is going to put you on the moon encounter orbit. And you can see in yellow, highlighted, this is the moon encounter orbit. And then the second orbit is actually straight for the moon. Uh, that's not good. But, you know, hypothetically, if this moon wasn't there, we would fly around the center. And then it will give us a gravity assist and launch us out on an escape trajectory. 
So one thing you can actually do is you can um, adjust maneuvers. And the way you do that is you go to the one, to the maneuver with the, to the orbit with the M next to it. And then you can see the sort of controls here, um, JL for adjusting the prograde, IK for adjusting radial, uh, UO, oh, sorry. Um, well, you can just read it, but anyway, so if I use NH, NH for adjusting prograde, right? So uh, you can't actually see what you're doing, which is a little, I'll probably uh, update that, but you can see I just added a little bit more prograde velocity, uh, probably need a little more. And you can see we're no longer actually hitting the moon. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can press C to create a new maneuver. And you can see that it just created a new maneuver sort of in the middle of the orbit patch. And then if you scroll down to the new maneuver that you created, once again, you can press N this time to sort of take away your uh, prograde velocity. And you can hold shift to take it away faster. And you can see this will circularize your orbit. And so this is the final sort of orbit. We have the moon encounter. Uh, we have the sort of transfer orbit. And then we have the final orbit around the moon. And um, I haven't really gotten any feedback on this system. Uh, probably as I use it, I'm going to find ways to improve it because it's not 100% intuitive right now. But it's not half bad in my opinion. And of course, you can see the same thing in the actual Kerbal Space Program view. We have the moon encounter patch and then focus view we have the transfer orbit and we have the final orbit around the moon now if you actually execute the maneuver um, it will also show you in the current orbit it will show you the sort of pa orbit patches that you're going to be flying over so not just your planned orbit but your actual orbit that you're following right now so since, you're, since I'm just here around Kerbin, it's only showing me one orbit. But if I was to burn, say, this maneuver, it would show the moon encounter orbit up here on the current orbit display. Now, the other two important widgets that Yarkama V has are for, uh, actually, planes. So, once again, you see it says connected, so we can close this window. And the first one is the attitude indicator, which is essentially just like an av vault, but and it doesn't show you yaw. It only shows you pitch and roll. And the other big one is the um, air map. Should be here. And it takes a second to load because it has to load the entire texture for the surface of the planet. Uh, if we just make this smaller, this is the attitude indicator is meant to be sort of vertical. So we can see, see, if we just launch our plane, you can see on the left, uh, I don't know why, there's a bug with uh, speed mode. It will say that, it will basically display the orbital speed as the surface speed, and you have to double click on it to show the correct speed. But um, here on the left, you can see the actual speed, so our airspeed, and then on the right, you can see the attitude, or sorry, the, the um, altitude. And I, I forget if this is sea level or terrain altitude. Um, but then of course here you can see the actual pitch of the craft right here. You can see the roll of the craft up here. See, we can pitch up, pitch down. And also you can see the, the it's hard to see, but there's a sort of bar up here that's right now I'm pitching up and you can see the bar is under the actual pitch and right now it's a little over. Basically that's your uh, prograde vector. So the difference between your actual pitch and your prograde pitch is gonna be your angle of attack. So basically uh, this is where you're pointing and this is where you're going. You can also see if I uh, yaw to the right or to the left 
it's going to sort of shift over to the right or to the left to represent that the angle to your velocity ve uh, vector is slightly off to your actual pointing directional vector. Anyway, so this is the map. Um, you can zoom in and out of this, but it will basically follow where you're going with your plane. Um, if you use the mouse wheel, middle mouse wheel button, you can actually scroll around this. And what you can actually do is you can uh, set up a runway. So if you click on a runway, it will show you a, a, a line that's going to show you how to align with a certain runway. And then you can click on it again and it will show you the actual other direction and click on it again to turn it off. So right now the only runways I've coded in are the KSP runway and the island runway, but you know you can easily add more, so I'll probably add more in the future. So let's just say if we want to uh, land at Kerbal Space Center, just click on this runway. And then to reset the air map to follow your plane again, you have to double click the middle mouse button. And then from here I can sort of more easily line up my approach. And you can see we're essentially just over the runway right now. And we can land. I'm going to actually use the reverse thrust on this plane. And you can see we've landed. So basically this was just a demonstration of some of the features that Yard MFD has. Uh, once again, like based on feedback, I'm willing to put time into it to expand it more, just add um, more features to it. Some of the things I've been thinking about was maybe using height map data from Kerbal Space Program to render maybe like a three-dimensional radar terrain almost. Um, I've been thinking about adding camera input, so like integration with hull cam or docking cam, but I haven't actually been able to figure out how to do that. Um, you know, I, I wanted to do that for a while. I've not been able to figure out how to do that. But basically, if you have any sort of feedback, like suggestions of what could make Yark MFD better, sort of what will give you that uh, in-vehicle action feel, I'm you know willing to consider adding it into Yark MFD.